everybody, I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about esophageal atresia and tracheoesophageal fistula. So, let's get into it. So, starting with a little bit of vocab here. So, what is an atresia? It is the absence of an opening of the body or the abnormal closure of a part of the body. Okay? And then a TEF, a tracheal esophageal fistula, is an abnormal connection between the trachea and the esophagus. So I try my best to draw this out to make it a little bit easier to understand. So this is normal anatomy. So we're going to say that this is our lungs, this goes down to our stomach, the pink here is our esophagus, and the blue here is our trachea. So trachea goes to the lungs, esophagus goes to the stomach. That's good. That's what we want. So when somebody has an atresia, an esophageal atresia, that connection from the upper portion of the esophagus to the lower portion is not there. There is a little pouch there that should not exist, okay? So that's what we mean by abnormal closure. So this little pouch is here in an atresia. Now the trachea, it's over here. It's still normal. Moving on. A fistula. So that abnormal connection between the two, okay? So you have your esophagus and your trachea, and then there's a little connection area in between the two. And as you can imagine, that's very dangerous because when you eat, right, our food should go down our esophagus and into our stomach. It should not go into our lungs. This fistula is an extra passage that can have food accidentally go down into the lungs, right? So we don't want that. And then finally, sometimes you have both. So you have that abnormal closure, that atresia of the esophagus, and you have the fistula connecting the two, okay? So normal anatomy, atresia, a fistula, and both. So you could have a variety of issues here. What are the causes of this? Well, this is a congenital anomaly, so you're born with this. So this could be caused by defective separation, incomplete fusion, or failure of the structures to connect. The highest risk group for having this are premature infants. So more likely to be seen in babies born before 37 weeks. And as you can imagine, this is very serious, okay? This is a life-threatening condition. It needs to be treated right away. These babies are at high risk for aspiration, right? And that makes sense because there's that connection down there into their lungs. And now even with an atresia, when they don't have that connection to the trachea, what happens is fluid can fill in that area which causes them to choke, so aspiration. And how is this diagnosed? It depends on when we catch it. So if it's diagnosed prenatally, they're going to catch it on an ultrasound. So this is another reason why prenatal appointments and going to your prenatal appointments is very, very important so they can discover these things early so we know what to expect at delivery. Now, if it wasn't caught prenatally, it's going to be caught soon after delivery because the baby's going to have a hard time breathing and then officially diagnosed with a radiography. When it comes to signs and symptoms, you want to think of the three C's. So those are choking, coughing, and cyanosis. Some other symptoms related to that that you might see include excessive like drooling or excessive secretions, other signs of respiratory distress. So if we remember in the neonate, what are some signs of respiratory distress? Nasal flaring, grunting, and retractions. And then the inability to place an orogastric tube. So this is when they would try to place a tube down the mouth, so down the throat into the stomach, and then it doesn't go there, obviously, because there's a pouch stopping it. So this is very serious. This is life-threatening. It needs to be fixed immediately after birth. So the way we fix this, surgery. So these babies are going to need surgery. So some important things that the nurse needs to know about this of course, they're going to be NPO. We should not attempt to feed these babies if we suspect them of having an esophageal atresia or tracheoesophageal fistula. That's dangerous. So, no feedings. 
They're going to be on IV fluids. We want to keep their head elevated so we can prep them in the isolate. So usually 30 to 45 degree angle. And we want their head turned to one side so that they don't aspirate. We're going to try to place an NG tube or an orogastric tube. Um, usually the physician is going to be the one that places it in this circumstance and it will usually be on low suction. So that tube is going to go into that blind pouch here and that's just to help manage those secretions because remember excessive drooling and secretions. Definitely they're going to have a hard time breathing so they're going to be on oxygen. They might even need to be on a ventilator for a short amount of time so expect that. We're going to monitor their vital signs and after surgery they'll likely have a chest tube because this surgery is going to take place in the thoracic cavity so that makes sense that they would have a chest tube. Um, a lot of times they do lose blood and they don't have a ton of blood to start off with right at this age so it is likely they might need a blood transfusion. A few days after surgery, after they start to do better, like two, three days after surgery, we can start giving them gavage feedings, so feeding them through those tubes, right? We're still not doing regular feeding yet. It's important to educate the parents about the possibility of a stricture, so the narrowing of the esophagus, which can cause dysphagia, which puts them at aspiration risk, right? So we don't want any of that to happen to these babies. This surgery fixes the problem. The surgery is a very good thing, and most babies who get this go on to be happy and healthy and leave normal lives, which is a great, great thing about it. But it's important that they are having regular follow-up care just to check for this to make sure everything's going okay. So we need to educate parents about the importance of going to your follow-up appointment. So this is a very serious condition. It's life-threatening. They need surgery right away. We need to know as the nurse what to look out for, those three C's, okay? And a little bit about how it works in these vocab words, atresia and a fistula. So that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.